Even in space, you have to eat your greens. NASA hopes its astronauts will be able to keep up their veggie intake on future missions to the moon or Mars, thanks to a greenhouse project it's working on with the University of Arizona. The prototype lunar greenhouse is cylindrical, measuring 18 feet in length and more than 8 feet in diameter. The garden uses a hydroponic system, in which water enriched with nutrient salts flows continuously through the roots of the plants. Carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts can be absorbed by the plants. In return, the plants produce oxygen for the astronauts through photosynthesis. The exchange forms a bioregenerative life support system. NASA's Veggie Plant Growth System was the first fresh food growth experiment on the International Space Station. The space agency hopes to provide a more sustainable approach to long-term exploration on the moon, Mars, and beyond. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Humanity's quest to explore the galaxy shows no sign of slowing down. NASA may have found a way to bring water back to Mars. NASA's scientists think it's possible to restore Mars's oceans by creating an artificial magnetic field that sits in front of the planet. Scientists say it is possible to place an inflatable structure that generates a magnetic dipole field at the Mars L1 Lagrange point. This would form an artificial magnetic shield to protect the planet from solar wind and radiation. Under this protection, the Martian atmosphere could become thick enough to melt carbon dioxide ice at the northern pole. In time, the atmosphere could spark a greenhouse gas effect that could restore some of Mars's oceans. Scientists said if the Martian atmosphere could be greatly enhanced over the next few decades, it would help pave the way for colonization on Mars. Life on Mars? Mars may not have been an arid wasteland after all, at least according to a new study that suggests the red planet may have been far more habitable than previously thought. Martian meteorites contain a specific mineral that has long led scientists to believe the planet had an ancient, dry environment. The mineral, called merylite, contains no water or hydrogen, which led to the assumption that its origins were likewise devoid of liquid. But new research now suggests that merylite was originally a hydrogen-containing mineral, and that Mars may have had a more water-rich history. When an asteroid or comet collides with the planet, the force of the collision propels Martian rocks containing Whitlocket out into space. Researchers theorized when these rocks enter Earth's atmosphere as meteors, the shock, pressure, and high temperature sustained during impact dehydrate the mineral, turning it into merylite. They tested the theory by blasting synthetic Whitlocket with a gas-powered gun at speeds of more than 1,600 miles per hour and with huge amounts of pressure. The shock experiments were sustained for only a fraction of a second, but already resulted in partial conversion, with 36% of the mineral transformed to merylite. The findings suggest Mars could have had a more abundant water supply. It also hints at the possibility of life on the red planet, as Whitlocket is water-soluble and contains phosphorus, which is an essential element for life. More detailed studies of Martian meteorites may provide more insight, but a Martian rock taken and transported to Earth will likely be needed for confirmation. For now, scientists need to make do with thermal imaging and rock sample analysis from the rovers. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the Red Planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro-meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city, termed Olympus Town. 
The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Mad scientist Elon Musk wants to nuke Mars. Stephen Colbert recently compared Elon Musk to a real-life Tony Stark during an interview in which the entrepreneur set out his vision to make Mars habitable. Now how exactly would this mad scientist make this foreign land habitable? Good old American way. Bombs. Terraforming is the hypothetical process of altering a planet's environment to make it livable. Tesla CEO Elon Musk recently floated the idea that Mars could be terraformed through nuclear strikes to destroy its polar ice caps. The average temperature on Mars is similar to Antarctica in winter. Destroying the poles may warm the planet, but scientists told the Los Angeles Times this may not warm Mars enough and could lead to unknown changes in its terrain. Naturally, Twitter had something to say. User James Royce asked, Can Musk get any cooler? While Jackalope asked, Why does Musk want to nuke Mars? Another slower method Musk suggested would be heating the planet through greenhouse gases. But this also faces problems, as Mars' current levels of carbon dioxide are potentially suitable for plants, but poisonous to animals. What do you think of Musk's ideas? Are they science fiction? Or do you think he may actually have a point?